Okay, so often when we think of finding life on other planets, one thing we always seem to underlook is what we don't see, because whether it's too small, too far away, or just immune to light, rather, you really see some of the strangest things happen in space. Um, but here's something else to think about. So bacteria is formed by stardust, you know, it makes sense, everything in the universe is made of energy and beyond that. But here's a question though, what about life on other planets? Is it possible that every planet has bacteria? And, and this might sound sort of debatable to some people, but I actually am willing to believe now that every single planet has some kind of bacteria. And here's how I kind of came to that realization. Every single planet is different as far as its geology, meaning like its surface, its core, the material it's made of, how old it is, its time scale, its sea level, its atmosphere, its magnetosphere, whatever you want to go into, you know, all the details aside. Um, but here's what's interesting. Bacteria. See, when we look at, like, life on other planets, we kind of... So basically, this is where we're at now. So if bacteria can survive in space, because it's different all around, and even in ways we haven't even thought of yet, then that can be formed and it can stick to any surface that travels. Now, everything in space moves and every planet is old enough that some kind of rock is either created through ice, stardust, cold temperatures, and eventually we've even analyzed, like Mercury, for example, the planet Mercury, is decompressing in space. So you have planets, asteroids, comets, um, meteorites, whatever, um, that are capable of just coming from far distances in space. And because there's really nothing unless it's holding its gravity together or tide locks it, it's really just roaming in space, flying around, crashing. But eventually bacteria gets picked up by it, and then that ends up on another planet, and then that evolves over time. So it's not crazy to think that, you know, if you have a planet such as, like, let's say Pluto, where it's been as old as it is, you know, and of course we don't know where it came from because it's possible it could have been from somewhere else. You know, that could have, you know, every planet's got, you know, if, if it's gotten hit by at least one asteroid or a big rock-like structure, let's say, a planet and another planet, you know, there you go, you know. And it's debatable even further how how much of a mystery is still there because, like, you know, like, I'll give you another example. You take, like, our moon, for example, was the remains of another planet, you know, its core, its its surface crashed into this planet. And over time, it's been slowly leaving this planet because the acceleration pushed it back. And then it just tied locked between our orbit and it was orbiting. Um, just even like our planet right now has got like other asteroids orbiting it that you really can't see unless you look into it specifically. That could have other bacteria from other planets. And it's actually very interesting to think that Everything is made of some kind of energy or some kind of bacteria. So it's basically an, an infinite ecosystem inside of another ecosystem. It's like putting a box in another box, that, that paradox. So it does make me wonder, you know, is it possible that everything just hasn't evolved to the correct position? That's why bacteria only go so far. Because bacteria never stops reproducing. That's the thing. But if you don't have the right conditions... Is it possible that just certain forms don't take place? So, that's something to think about. Every planet turns out, like, every planet can have its own, its own uh, habitants or its own environmental effects. But over time, if that doesn't reap the certain command, it's not going to evolve the right way. But that's not to say that every single living organism is the same thing, because everything's different all around. You know, as we've seen on this planet, you have, you know, you could put like a cold blooded creature in a warm habitat and it might, and it would probably die or maybe not. And then you've got the opposite where that would still happen. You also could have like, you could go take a cold blooded creature, put it in a cold environment and maybe it's not suitable for that cold environment. Maybe it's too cold, but it's just cold enough that it can survive you know, or maybe not, you know, everything, like I've said, everything's different, everything comes from different parts, and so you really have to, like, keep your own research notes before you can justify 
saying that, you know, what, what really happens in this reality that we see. So again, facts and logic, and even instead of just opinions and favoritism, rather. So it would make sense that, yes, bacteria is definitely out there. And I wouldn't be surprised that it can be on every planet. Now, if you also want to get into conspiracies, you know, it's very possible that they know aliens exist, but they're just hiding it because it would contradict religion and religion's a scam. So at least in its current form anyways. Now, does that mean there's not a God or something out there? Uh, I couldn't say because, you know, I don't know them personally if they do exist. So it's, that's debatable. But uh, me personally... If, if there is a creator, here's how I look at it. They would be an advanced alien species far greater than anything we could comprehend. And I do believe in an intelligent design, but there's different possibilities that could exist from that too, you know? You might as well say, I mean, you, you could say that there's something out there, but it's not going to be any of the gods that human race worships, basically. It, it would have to be like something completely different that nobody's ever heard of. Maybe we're right about some stuff, but how do you really prove something that, you know, we don't fully understand? We we don't, you know, so nobody knows. So that so over time that would eventually turn into something else. And then, you know, as people grow up, they live, they die, but their genetics still go on. So again, everything's made of energy, and even like you could say, like an even energy cell is literally not not the same energy cell you're probably thinking of, like in like photons and all that, but you could say that too. But the kind of energy that you there's different types of energy radiation and what's the other one it's always um but it, but whatever yeah you know matter and radiation you know different forms of energy different subgroups but they eventually turn into something the same thing you know true annihilations can happen with matter and antimatter and, and it's many infinite possibilities and what's really crazy is even that stuff still turns into another form of energy. So you're really not. So I've gotten to the point where I believe that like, it's like the first law of thorough dynamics is actually wrong in a case. It says that energy can only be, it can't be created, but it's like, it can be created. And it, and it what's, and what's even more bizarre is it creates even more energy in the process. So as that energy is being destroyed, it's also creating something else. And, or not even being destroyed, it's like just turning into something else. You know, so you have existing energy itself using energy to create more energy. It's like three different definitions right there. But it's, it's crazy to think that as we humans exist in, in, in this universe... You know, you, you could basically just say even the base principle of what an energy cell is and everything else, it might as well be a living organism. So everything, even if it doesn't look like it's a living organism, is still alive, sort of, as weird as that sounds, because there's always something there that makes up its body, and it's just in a different way we've never thought of yet. Same thing with, you know, bacteria. You know, bacteria is just a single celled organism that's capable of multiple things but then over time that energy can be found everywhere else and then it eventually turns into something else or reproduces and turns into something else and then as time goes on collaborates conjugates and or eventually just evolves into something else just like everything else progress so to say that there is no there's no life out there is like to say that like, all these planets and everything aren't alive somehow, even if it looks like there's nothing there. Or maybe at one point there was, but it's but its remnants are still there and it's gone. Or even more complicated and more of a mystery, think of it like Mars and Venus again. Or even Mercury, the planet. You know, at one point, maybe there was something there many years ago, but what happened to it? Decompressor, it, it just, the, the bacteria and the energy and everything else that was there just got distorted and it faded it back into the universe. And then it just went somewhere else to create a new beginning, rather. Something to think about.